Spirit of God in the clear running water, blowing to greatness the trees on the hill. Spirit of God in the finger of morning, fill the earth, bring it to birth, and blow where you will. Blow, blow, blow till I be but breath of the Spirit blowing in me. Down in the meadows, the willows are moaning. Sheep in the pasture, land cannot lie still. Spirit of God, creation is groaning. Fill the earth, bring it to birth, and blow where you will. Blow, 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 till I be but breath of the Spirit blowing in me. Spirit of God, every man's heart is lonely, watching and waiting and hungry until Spirit of God, man longs that you only fulfill the earth, bring it to birth, and blow where you will. Blow, 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 till I be but breath of the Spirit blowing in me. From the East African Medical Missionary Sisters. Griffin, Joanna, you're going to stand there. Can you put this on? I'll hold it. Mary said, my soul gives glory to the Lord. My spirit delights. Louder and, and speak out. Like hold it up like this and speak out. Mary said, my soul gives glory, glory to the Lord. My spirit delights in God my flavor. He has taken note of me, even though I am not important. From now on, all people will call me blessed. The mighty one has done great things for me. His name is holy. He is mercy to those who have to those who have respect for him. From parent from parent to child down the years. He has done many things with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their deepest thoughts. He has brought down rules from rulers. rulers from their thrones. But he has lifted people up who are not important. He has filled those who are hungry with good things. But he has sent those which are rich who are rich away empty. He helped the people of Israel who serve him. He has always remembered to be kind to Abraham and his children down through the years. He has done it just as he said to our people of long ago. Can you hear me? Okay. We can hear you now. Um, <clears throat> we have many things to be thankful for today. And one of them would be the contributions of the children. Yesterday they were here working hard, um, making art that matters. So you want to be sure you, you see this before you leave. So my first gratitude is going gonna, is gonna to be for the children's art. And um, 
<clears throat> my son broke his foot so that's a concern he was running down a mountain and fell on his foot and so then he had to walk on that break for a mile and a half so that would be Andy's broken foot and the worst part of it is that his health insurance ran out two days after the break which kind of highlights a problem many Americans are facing all the time not just during COVID but all the time so health insurance issues does anybody have either a gratitude or a concern to um, add to me oh all right this is in the way of announcement uh, thank you everybody for for uh, considerately uh, doing uh, what we need to do to keep everybody in faith. Uh, for some people, I forgot, I wasn't able to mention that we have an offering box. So as you go out, if you want, I've got a little cookie mushroom that will write on them or just put the offering in the box. Um, but, uh, oh, if you didn't get a bulletin, we have bulletins. We're not supposed to share them to anyone outside of our household. And finally, some fairly good news, and this is uh, on, the, on the order of a gratitude. On your way out, instead of fellowship, <laughs> uh, Mary has been so kind as to carefully bake her famous chocolate chip cookie and carefully, carefully seal them in their own little uh, plastic bag. So on your way out, grab yourself a chocolate chip chip cookie. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Other uh, concerns or? Yes, Richard. Two. Uh, I have a concern. One of our uh, guys at work, was on the freeway uh, Friday night uh, working and got rear-ended oh. and uh, totaled both cars and he went to the hospital for a CAT scan and I haven't heard whether he got released or not. Can you give us a name? Sealy? Sealy? S-E-A-L-L-Y? Young guy. And then uh, a gratitude that we have uh, services outdoors at the church. Anyone else with a concern or a gratitude? Yeah, can't. We'll ask for uh, traveling mercies for for us and the rest of our family that are meeting in Utah this week. So we'll be traveling there. Some of our family coming from Michigan.
back from him or having having not true to him since. But he was he was fine last time I talked to him. Anyone else? So, okay, so if you need to add something later, we can. We'll have announcements at the end. Okay, so our hymn today is Spirit of the Living God. of life and of the sufferings that are going on around us, let us pray for the establishment of peace in our hearts and on earth. Amen. Tishnat Han.
I'm going to read to you the same scripture that Griffin read, but from a different version, translation, from the message. So listen, because we will be talking about this scripture in a few minutes in small groups. Okay. I'm bursting with God news. I'm dancing the song of my Savior God. God took one good look at me and look what happened. I'm the most fortunate woman on earth. What God has done for me will never be forgotten. The God whose very name is holy set apart from all others. His mercy flows in wave after wave on those who are in awe before him. He bared his arm and showed his strength, scattered the bluffing braggarts. He knocked tyrants off their high horses, pulled victims out of the mud. The starving poor sat down to a banquet. The callous rich were left out in the cold. He embraced his chosen child, Israel. He remembered and piled on the mercies, piled them high. It's exactly what he promised, beginning with Abraham and right up to now. As I looked at this scripture, a few things came to mind. On the line, I am the most fortunate woman on earth. Can we say this today? In spite of the limitations of our times, what do we have to joy rejoice about? Well, we still have one another. We can call each other and listen to one another when our sisters and brothers need us. We can still give each other virtual hugs. We can give advice. We can listen to advice. We can be there for others who need us at a low point in their lives or even a low point in their day. Another line. What God has done for me will never be forgotten. I dare not be fickle, faithful one day and not the next. These are trying times, but I need to remain vigilant in my faith. We can depend on God. Others that we have not even imagined listening and watching will take note, will pay attention, will respond. I will smile with my hand, with my voice, with my body language. Quote, he bared his arm and showed his strength, scattered the bluffing braggarts. He knocked tyrants off their high horses pulled victims out of the mud. What can we gain from these words? How do we pull victims out of the mud? Now, I have five questions for us to look at. We have some time for small group discussion. Before we break into groups, uh, I'll just state the questions. Remember, you can skip questions. You can spend the whole time on one question. You can do it any order you like. Number one, what does it mean to be dancing the song of our Savior? Two, how can we show that we have been blessed to be the most fortunate woman on the earth? Three, what is it that we do or plan to do or have done that will never be forgotten? Four, 
God's mercy flows in wave after wave in those who are in awe before him. What does this look like? Can you give some examples? Five, the starving poor sat down to a banquet. The callous rich were left out in the cold. Has this ever happened? What would it look like? So the questions are in the bulletin. And so I said, some of you didn't get a bulletin. We need at least one person in each group who has a bulletin. It's not you all have to have a bulletin. So um, I'm going to recommend that maybe this becomes a group if you can all kind of face each other. And maybe this group can join with that group. And we'll take some minutes to talk about these questions. <laughs> That's cool. That should be okay, though. Pop around? Yes. Okay. Thanks, Steve. So, would you like to facilitate the questions? Me? Me? What question do we want to cover? Uh, Number four? Number four. Because I didn't hear that one. <laughs> God's mercy flows in, wa uh, in wave after wave in those who are in awe before him. What does this look like? And can you give some examples? Don't everybody speak at once. <laughs> uh, God's mercy is on ending, thank goodness. Because we really mess up sometimes. And without God's mercy, we would be up a creek. Without a path. And number five, I don't think it's been happening recently. Starving Paul sat down to a banquet and cows which were left out on the floor. Has this ever happened? Hmm. Yeah, during the revolution. <laughs> what would it look like? Yeah. And if say something about the rich? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, well, uh, the cows rich. Yeah. yeah. Or, or as Bernie would say, is a billionaire class. <laughs> yeah, there is gates. So. It's, uh, I think that's, and this is not, uh, this is not a political statement, although, let's face it, everything today is. Um, uh, that's, that's what socialism really is. It's what, how the first century church lived, and uh, um, they shared among each other, and they, uh, uh, there were no, there were no rich, there, there were no rich in their, in their country. Um, well, I heard somebody talking about being a Democrat and a Republican, not talking politics or anything. And, and he was saying he was a, was a Democrat, now he's a Republican. And I go, why? Yeah, I like Trump. Okay. That's neither here nor there. I hope he doesn't win. <laughs> he might. That's scary. 
But what I was trying to get at was sharing. I mean, there are a lot of starving kids in the United States right now. You know, yeah. and um, he was mentioning the fact that socialism is bad and is almost akin to communism. Yeah, that's what they try to paint. That's what they say. And I go, but it's not. You know, it has nothing to do with communism because there's a whole big, big difference between yeah. the two. Maybe he didn't want to hear that, but he, well, he shut up and just talked. <laughs> Mm. Um, I think the only <clears throat> the only way the wealthy can be have their wealth removed is when they don't pay their taxes, <laughs> commit a crime, or when they have to leave the country. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think that this was probably meant for. Yeah, they talk about the banquet, you know, and we will be, we are invited. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. It seemed to be fine. Uh, when we were uh, on Zoom this morning for the book uh, study, and uh, we have uh, gotten our daughters to get into that too. And that, you know, that has really been fun, you know, to see them and to. And, and for them to, uh, to I well, to got to go this last night. I was really um, thankful for I was invited to We all have a chance to a talk about party. the question or whatever. Yeah, so no, we put been, on we by um, an old friend of mine Dad, that I haven't seen in years. years. Um, uh -huh. his wife I used to be in a dance group. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. It's always nice to check in. Yeah. 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 That's, that's the most evangelical I've been around for a long time. Um, but, um, uh, yeah. 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 Uh, Okay. Yeah. 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 We ought to start him thinking about uh, whenever you know, somebody says something that we like, like or or doing it with a good you know. I think that would be really nice that we have all have a chance to do something so that we appreciate. Do this, some clapping. Yeah. Yeah. Just clapping and drinking is kind of loud. Yeah. So you do that. Yeah, you remember that. Evangelicals can do some things. Yeah. They do. They, uh, yeah. 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 Um, and there was no, uh, there's no going on there. Everybody was relaxed. Yes, I wasn't with you. Everybody uh, knew somebody there. And you visited knew, stuff. You know, several people. Because that's where she went. That's where she went before. Um, saw a few people I hadn't seen since I huh? left the church. You went by New York? Uh, it was good. To see oh, you were close to New York, right. Um, Put your chair down, lady. Sorry. Right hand friend. You're kind of just in that place. You're covered in pink top, I though. Just, uh, it looks amazing. I just couldn't take the theology. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad I brought you in. Absolutely. But, um, when I first the theology was right. Questions. That's okay. It's tough. Yeah. Welcome up. It's all good. Yeah, what was that very first one? Dance. What does it mean to be dancing uh, the song of our Savior? We and number two, too. 
Uh, can we uh, show that we have been blessed to be there? Uh -oh. <laughs> well, this could be, be good or bad, right? And, and also, is it going to be forgotten by God or by our classmates? Or who? So, never is pretty, a pretty long time. So I would assume that that means not only the people that we have touched directly, but somehow or another, that is carried on. Um, well, the scary part is that you don't always know. You don't know that you've affected somebody either adversely or... And that's actually a blessing in itself that we don't know. You know, there's a scripture that says, don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. Um, and sometimes, uh, and we, it's a faith issue with us that seeds that we plant, things that we do, kindnesses, tiny kindnesses, and huge kindnesses we share and show are all be speaking Jesus and the kingdom coming point of the world. Um, um, so, to me, uh, no, what specifically? <laughs> I kind of I know all the time. Pardon my friend. Coming up with some um, the, the only thing I can think of is like little acts of Yeah, I, I, like, say you walk down the street and there's a homeless dude sitting there. Yeah. But you acknowledge that person. But you might be the only person who has acknowledged him in days. So it, could, and it could be immensely important to him, but to you it's just a small thing. Uh -huh. I'm thinking about this. There is this man that used to live up under the bridge and um, as you're coming out of Point Loma across the bridge to Sea Road Drive, right there, that, that it's in mass construction right now. But he lived up underneath the eave of the bridge on the ledge. And he claimed that whole area. And he would sleep up there on that ledge. He had a cardboard that was laying there and stuff. And he had a broom. And he would take the weeds and weeds out. And he would sweep the area. And the side of that was his house on the ledge. And I think that when that person that moved in, that story, yeah. I think it was one of the big ones. Oh. He suddenly just disappeared. And he, in my mind, I had created the story of how he was a veteran. Because he had some resources, so he's getting money and he chose to live the isolated life of the street person. And yet he had this whole, to make a long story short, that man affected me. And I would look for him when I would drive, because that's the way I would drive from Point Loma to my house, you know, shopping and whatnot. And I would see him and I would wave to him. He never did anything. He's always had food. He had a fishing pole. He had fishing. Would he respond? And, and he was up there underneath his ledge, and I, you know, and then I worried about him. And he wasn't there and so forth and so on. So he was even aware that what he was doing was a But for me, it validated that a person can be a person no matter where they live on, and they can, and whether they're homeless or whether they're rich, and the choices that they make and the involvement that they get into. And keeping that area clean, being um, respectful to others, and you know, not being right. So I remember him still whenever I drive that road. Of course, now they would have moved him out because they've done a better job. But Somehow, 
are cared for within the community. Either their own family or their wider family. And people are not so specific about who is your brother, who is your uncle. It may be no blood relative, but that's what you call them. And they, they care for each other. And I mean, it may not be an overwhelming care, but they'll have a place to sleep. They'll have rice in their bowl. Did you have people there that were uh, like alcoholics and drug addicts and mentally ill people? Yeah. Let me think. That's a very big question. I know I can begin to answer it, but the alcoholism and stuff didn't enter the community I was in much because it was a church community and and Nigerians who are either Muslim or Christian don't drink and they don't smoke. So those things were like in a different part of town and pretty rare. But the what was the other one? It's a drug addiction. Oh mentally ill. The way African culture deals with that is the mentally ill they may be treated really badly. They may be, um, they're considered bewitched, you know, uh, what do you call it, possessed. Um, it's also a way to blame, you could say, well, it's your fault that the community ran out of food, whatever, you know, so they're going to, they'll blame stuff on that individual. So the whole witchcraft thing, so, you know, this communal and collectivist society does have this dark side. That's a general answer. No, I was just curious when you were talking because I thought, oh, yeah, we seem to take care of our own. But it used to be that if you, twins would be killed. Because twins were considered an aberration. Things like this. They were just, I mean, some missionary woman from the Western world changed that about a hundred years ago. But before that, twins were killed. And so maybe if, if a child was born deformed or in any way wrong, they, they would be but, um, banished or whatever. Partly because they were considered a curse. A what? A curse. A curse. A curse. And who knows which came first? It's a bad The inability to care for people like that. Or the Let's see. No five story. more minutes. Five. I'll turn you guys to five minutes. Okay. Uh, you want to do one more for the five minutes? Um, do I get to choose again? Sure. What does it mean to be dancing the song of our Savior? Well, this has got to be joy. How do we express our joy? Yeah. The, the, the scripture is about Mary, uh, Mary's praise, prayer, annunciation, and when she learned that she was going to be I remember that it says that when cousin Elizabeth came pregnant with John the Baptist, the baby leaped for joy in his mother's womb. And that's always stuck with me. I think it has to do, it's mostly about joy. Dancing a song about saving the world, to me, is actually physically, musically, in every way, in some, in an infectious way, expressing you. I can see this, I'm picturing now my street, uh -huh. and my isolate, the isolation within my neighborhood, Yeah. and how if somebody's got their music on, mm -hmm. maybe we accept it more than we used to. Yeah. Because we're just happy, oh my God, there's life over there. Uh -huh. Or, you know, or somebody's having a good time. Or, oh, you mean since the pandemic? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Because I think I, I'm looking at all these questions in light of the pandemic. Um, if I may, the, um, this weekend there's a virtual uh, chorus leadership symposium for the daily courses and lesbian courses. And there is a song that was written by an African 